Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the SWUS uh, College Basketball Wednesday. Got a pretty loaded day here. We're really starting to get into the thick of these conference tournaments. So I'll go through as many games as I can. I think I have five lined up, but whatever I don't get to, we will go through on the live show. I think we got 16 or 17 games lined up. That's going to be at 1030 a.m. Eastern time in the morning. So if you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. Probably open the waiting room maybe 20, 30 minutes before that. Uh, so yeah, whatever I don't get through, I'll go through on the live show. I'm going to go through four or five in this video. Let's roll. Welcome to the source. The source. Get the Suez. First up, we're starting in the ACC. We got Florida State, Virginia Tech here. Vatek laying three points in this one. I was a little surprised by this line. I thought it'd be closer to a pick em. Uh Total sitting at 153. Betting trends on the Florida State side. We'll start with the neutral site games. Two and one against the spread this year for the Knowles. Uh, 11 and nine against the spread in Big 12 play. Big 12 play. It's ACC play. Someone messed up the notes. Uh, two and three against the spread in their last five. On the Virginia Tech side, two and two against the spread in neutral sites. Eight and 12 against the spread in conference play two and three against the spread in their last five overall recent production from these two teams will look at the last 10 games virginia tech five and five in the last 10 compared to florida state four and six but look at the strength of schedule florida state sitting at 52nd virginia tech back at 105th so florida state has played a stronger schedule recently and look at the records on the road one and four versus one and five so both are terrible but florida state a slightly higher winning percentage on the road before we get into this one we should probably take a look at the head-to-head -head matchups from earlier this season these teams met twice already Ready. First one was at Florida State back on January 6th. FSU won that game 77-74. Then they met again, this one at Virginia Tech, and Tech took this one 83-75. So these two teams split one and one, each winning their home game. So let's start with the matchup for Florida State's offense, and I'm going to give the edge to the Knowles here based on these four factors. I mean, it's not an overwhelming mismatch for Florida State, but you got to keep in mind, these are numbers from the last 10 games, and we just pointed out that Florida State's played a much stronger schedule. So yeah, these four numbers, that makes me point towards florida state offensively shot zones on this side uh the mid-range shot should be there for florida state uh mid-range shooting a big part of florida state's offense in the last 10 games their 80th in frequency from the short mid-range 81st in frequency from the long mid-range pretty solid efficiency numbers there too 61st and 130th so florida state a very good mid-range shooting team look at virginia tech's defense there now they're 44th against the long mid-range so that might be a problem but 318th from 8 to 12 feet from the basket so i like that matchup for Florida State. On the other side of the court, we got Virginia Tech's offense, and you got to give the edge to the Hokies on this side. Even with strength of schedule incorporated, I mean, 78 to 304, that's a pretty big discrepancy in the most important stat category, shot making. So yeah, I'll give the edge to Virginia Tech's offense. Shot zones on this side, we got to pull up the three-point shooting numbers, and in my opinion, this is what betting this game really comes down to. Do you think Virginia Tech's threes are going to fall or not? Because as you can see here, the above the break three is a big shot zone for the Hokies. In the last 10 games, they're 60th in free would see from there but just 250th in efficiency so they're taking a lot of them but not really hitting them and florida state's terrible defensively out there 337 so the looks are going to be there for virginia tech question is can they get their shots to fall or not i don't like to be reliant on outside shooting in these tournament games i'm like i said i'm surprised by the line i think it should be closer to a pick so the fact that i'm getting three I got to go with the Knowles here. I'm on Florida State next game. Pac-12 tournament up next. These games are being played in Vegas. Uh, USC, Washington. This line is now two and a half when I'm recording this. Washington catching two and a half. Definitely moving towards USC. Uh, as recent as an hour and a half ago, this is at one. Uh, so this line's been at the uh, been on the move for sure. Total sitting at 153 and a half. Betting trends on the Trojan side. Let's start with some neutral site stuff. USC, two and two against the spread in neutral site games this year. 10 and 10 against the spread in conference play. They are four and one against the spread in their last five, though. USC coming into the tournament, probably playing their best basketball of the year. On the Washington side, Huskies are three and one against the spread on neutral sites, 11 and nine against the spread in conference play, three and two against the spread in their last five overall. Recent production from these two teams, kind of a wash here. I mean, USC six and four in their last 10 games, Washington five and five. Uh, Washington's slightly better record on the road in that span, three and two versus two and three. Strength of schedule is pretty even. USC 121st, Washington 116th. 
Before we get into this one, we need to take note of the game that just happened between these two about a week and a half ago. USC went on the road up to Washington and beat them. 82-75 final score. That was on March 2nd. We'll start with the matchup for USC's offense. And if you use numbers from the last 10 games, it's kind of a wash here. I mean, EFG 109-115. Uh, Washington has the big rebounding advantage, but look at the turnovers. That's heavily in favor of USC. Uh, really, not much. No lean either way here based on these numbers. Shot charts for USC's offense. The mid-range shot should definitely be there for the Trojans. Uh, as you can see, USC does take a decent amount of mid-range shots. 116th in frequency from the short mid-range. 117th from the long mid-range. Washington defensively in those two zones. 168th and 318th. So mid-range shot should be there. On the other side, we got the Washington offense. And again, these are numbers from the last 10 games. I give the edge to Washington here offensively. A little worried about USC creating turnovers, though. They're 45th in the last 10 games. So USC might be able to create some turnovers here. But as a whole, I'd give the edge to Washington on the side. Huskies offense should definitely be able to score at the basket in this one. In the last 10 games, they're 124th in shot frequency at the rim. They've been attacking the rim a lot. And look at the efficiency. 37 so they've been very good scoring down low usc defensively in that span at the basket 213th in efficiency now the 34th in frequency so they've done a good job about limiting shot attempts at the rim but once their opponents get there they're scoring at a high rate as far as betting this game i mean this is tough because clearly usc just found their stride like i said they're probably playing their best basketball of the year right now and i get why everyone's taking usc but the price on this is starting to get out of control here. USC is now laying points, and we're talking about two and a half, maybe even three later. I'm on Washington. I haven't bet this one yet. I'm waiting it out. If this touches three, I'm taking Washington. So I'm going to be on Washington here, but I haven't bet it yet. So uh, Washington, hopefully I'm getting a plus three next game big east tournament up next xavier butler butler catch of one and a half points and the total sitting at 150 and a half betting trends on the musketeers side xavier's one and one against the spread on neutral sites just eight and 12 against the spread in conference play and just one and four against the spread in their last five so not the best looking trends there for xavier on the butler side a perfect three and oh against the spread at neutral sites seven and 13 against the spread in big east play two and three against the spread in their last five overall recent production from these two teams definitely points towards butler now you might be thinking kyle how they're both four and six in their last 10 two and three on the road in that span look at the strength of schedule butler 50th xavier all the way back at 161st so these two teams may have the same record in the last 10 games but butler's played a significantly stronger schedule before we get into this one we need to take note of the previous matchups these two teams met twice this year uh, on january 16th butler went on the road to xavier xavier beat him pretty handedly 85 71 final score but then they get a, they met again last week on march 6 actually exactly one week ago uh, final score of that one was 72 66 in butler so butler got their revenge these two teams split one and one each winning their home game we'll start with the matchup for xavier's offense and you got to give the edge to butler on this side and you might be looking at these numbers thinking how is that possible but keep in mind these are numbers from the last 10 games and we just pointed out butler's played a much stronger schedule so the fact that they have similar looking stats over the last 10 and butler's played the stronger schedule definitely give the edge to butler's defense here shot charts for the musketeers offense uh xavier does attack the basket a lot they're 98th in frequency just 269th in efficiency though so i mean when you're looking at these numbers and you look at butler's defensive numbers you could be like hey xavier attacks the rim a lot and butler struggles to protect the basket but xavier struggles to score down there so i don't really know how much i consider that at an angle i will say the mid-range shot should be there for xavier if you pull up those numbers 59th in frequency 95th in efficiency so they shoot a lot of those long mid-range shots and they're pretty good at it butler's got terrible defensive numbers there 306 in the last 10 so mid-range shots should be there for xavier but i don't really like the matchup for him at the rim on the other side we got the butler offense and i guess i give the slight edge to butler because keep in mind the strength of schedule these are numbers from the last 10 but look at rebounding xavier 133rd to 351st it's kind of hard not to see that that's a huge mismatch there also free throw rate huge advantage towards xavier's defense so butler's not going to get second and chance points and they're not gonna get trips to the foul line but as far as shot making we're talking 156 to 241 with the much stronger schedule so i get slight edge butler shot charts for butler's offense there's really two shot zones that they frequent the short mid-range shot they're 65th in frequency from there in the last 10 but xavier's actually got great defensive numbers there 131st in efficiency so i don't like that matchup for butler that being said i think the three-point shot should be there for butler in this one in the last 10 games they're 85th in frequency from above the break 82nd in efficiency so butler's been a good three-point shooting team recently xavier defensively efficiency numbers against the above the break three 173rd 
So I like Butler to get the three ball going in this one, which is why I'm going to be taking Butler here. I mean, I was hoping to get Butler like plus three. Didn't happen, uh, but I'm still down to take him at this short number. I think they win the game. So give me Butler next game. Big 12 up next. We got Kansas State, Texas. Texas laying four and a half points in the total sitting at 142 and a half. Betting trends on the Kansas State side. Let's start with the neutral sites. Two and two against the spread this year. 10 and eight against the spread in conference play. Three and two against the spread in their last five overall. On the Texas side, one and two against the spread on neutral sites, eight and 10 against the spread in conference play, three and two against the spread in their last five. Recent production from these two teams definitely points towards Texas. Kansas State, four and six in their last 10 games with the 12th strongest schedule, 0 and five on the road in that span. Now, I know these tournament games aren't true road games, but not a good sign there. Uh, meanwhile, Texas, six and four in their last 10 games, two and three on the road, and their strength of schedule is sixth in that span. So Texas, a winning record against a very strong schedule. We'll start with the matchup for Kansas State's offense and got to give the edge to Kansas State on this side. I mean, look at the rebounding and free throw rates. Rebounding 185 to 292 in favor of Kansas State. Free throw rate 33 to 292. So Kansas State should get plenty of trips to the foul line. They should also get second chance points in this one. Where What worries me about Kansas State offensively, look at the turnovers. 348th in turnover rate in the last 10 games. Texas is at 104. So Texas should be able to create plenty of turnovers here on the defensive side. And to be honest, I don't like this matchup for Kansas State here. When we take a look at shot zones, I got to take a look at the numbers at the basket because Kansas State attacks the rim a lot. In the last 10 games, they're 53rd in shot frequency at the rim, just 229th in efficiency. So they're attacking the basket a lot, but they haven't been very efficient scoring. That's exactly what Texas wants. Look at Texas defensive numbers. 342nd in, in frequency, 84th in efficiency. That's what this Texas defense does. They want you, they force you inside. They want you to take contested layups. Seems like Kansas State's a perfect matchup. That's exactly what Texas wants you to do. On the other side, we got the Texas offense, and I'd give the edge to the Longhorns on this side. Uh, they definitely have the rebounding edge, turnover edge. Uh, free throw rate goes back to Kansas, and EFG goes to Kansas State as well, but still give the edge to the Longhorns here. Really nothing here to go by as far as shot zones. I mean, I guess you could point at the long mid range shot. Texas does take a lot of those. Uh, they're 28th in frequency. That accounts for 21% of their shot attempts in the last 10 games. 21% of their shot attempts are long mid-range shots. That's a lot. The problem is they're just 265th in efficiency. And I mean, Kansas State 211th offensively, not really an angle. Really couldn't find much here in the shot zones. As far as betting this game, I mean, I don't really have a ton of interest in this one. I'd only go Texas though. I don't really like this Kansas State team. Four and a half is short enough where I think I'd go Texas. They're the much better team. They've been playing better recently. So, so yeah, give me the Longhorns minus four and a half. I'll let you know on the live show at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'll let you know if I actually bet it. But as of right now, this might just be a pass. Next game. SEC tournament up next. We're in Nashville for these games. Mizzou versus Georgia. Georgia laying three points in the total sitting at 145 and a half. Betting trends on the Mizzou side. Missouri 0-2 against the spread on neutral sites this year. 5-13 and against the spread in conference play. That's just wild. 2-3 uh, and three against the spread in their last five. On the Georgia side, 0-3 oh, against the spread in neutral site. So neither of these teams have covered the number on a neutral court this whole year. Um, Georgia, though, 11-7 against the spread in conference play. 3-2 against the spread in their last five. Recent production from these two teams obviously points towards Georgia. I mean, Georgia 2-8 in their last 10, 1-4 on the road in that span. How do they have the advantage over anyone? Well, Missouri's 0-10. In fact, I don't think Missouri's won a conference game this whole year. Uh, I think they're 0 for in the SEC. Uh, Georgia's also played a stronger schedule, 27 to 66. So yeah, Georgia's been the better team. Before we get into this one, we need to take note that these two teams already met. It was back on January 6th, I believe it was. Final score of that game, 75-68 Georgia. That was on the road in Mizzou too. So Georgia went on the road and beat these guys. We'll start with the matchup for Mizzou's offense. And I mean, I guess a slight edge for Georgia defensively here, but... It's really not much of an endorsement for Georgia as it is. I mean, look at these. Stuff. This is terrible. Uh, both these units are really bad. That's my analysis here. Both these units are terrible. Shot zones for the Mizzou offense. I mean, we can point at these short mid-range shots. Missouri does take a lot of them. In the last 10 games, they're 98th in frequency from that zone. Three, 337th in efficiency, though. So they're taking a lot of them, but they're not hitting them. And look at Georgia's defensive numbers there. 34th in efficiency against that shot. So... Yeah, I like this matchup for Georgia's defense. On the other side of the court, we got Georgia's offense, and 
again, I mean, I guess I'll give the edge to Georgia here. No, I'll give the edge to Georgia because Missouri's defense might be the worst thing ever assembled. Look at the rebounding numbers here, 209th to 362nd. So Georgia should have some second chance opportunities and they're not even a good rebounding team. That's how crazy this game is. Uh, Georgia should also get plenty of trips to the foul line. Shot zones for Georgia's offense. I mean, I guess we could point at the above the break three numbers. Georgia takes a lot of those. They're 58th in frequency in the last 10 games. So they're taking a lot of those out uh, perimeter threes, but they're just 331st in efficiency. So they're not really hitting them. Missouri 190th defensively. I don't know. This game's really hard. How about that? I don't, I don't really know what to do with this. Uh, Georgia's the better team, I, but I swear I could see them losing this game. I'm on Georgia. I'll lay the three, but this this is these are the, the bottom feeders of the SEC here. Give me Georgia minus three. As I mentioned earlier, live show 1030 a.m. Eastern time. I think we got 16 or 17 games lined up. March Madness is officially here. We're going through it all. So if you're able to make it in the morning, we'd love to see you in the comments. If you want my top bets for all sports parlays of the day, or you'd like to join our Discord, head over to KyleCrams.com. The information is right there on the web page. Let's have ourselves a nice Wednesday. Hopefully, by the time you're watching this, we had a great Tuesday. I'm recording this earlier on, so I don't even know how we did yet. Um, let's have ourselves a good one. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.